on this ranch, we have about 120 acres and we grow about 30 acres of grapes, mostly Cabernet, a little bit of Cab Franc and some Zinfandel. The Zinfandel is very historic. Uh, it was first planted on the ranch in the 1870s. It's a specific clone that's named after the folks that we bought the ranch from, the Whirlies. So it's called the Whirly clone, which, um, and, and we think it's quite special. It has uh, some unique characteristics uh, that differ it from other Zinfandels, uh, mostly color uh, and structure. Um, so we grow grapes. Uh, and that really starts in March and lasts through October. We then make some wine in the fall from oh, middle of September through Thanksgiving. And then in the, the winter months is our downtime and we go out and try to sell a little bit of wine. So that's what we do. The old winery, uh, which we now use primarily for parties, it's just a ruin. Uh, for us it's very special because it, it sort of gives us an anchor into the history of what this ranch was. Uh, many people don't realize until, you know, eight, until the gold rush in California, California itself is part of Mexico. And in most of the Napa Valley, most of California was made up of very large ranches, uh, you know, 20 to 40,000 acres. And this was part of a ranch called Rancho Camas. Uh, in 1848, that ranch was broken up and was made available for homesteading. 1873 it was homesteaded. 1881, the winery was built. Uh, and wine has been pr produced on this ranch basically since that time, or grapes have been grown since that time. One of the terrific things about this industry uh, is that most people are in it for passion. And that's not just me growing grapes and making wine. That, that's the retailer, uh, that's the wine sommelier or wine steward at a restaurant. This is not an industry where you become wealthy. This is an industry where you satisfy your passion for food and wine. Um, and here, you, you know, we try to keep a balance. And the balance is that uh, I want to make enough wine and, and grow enough grapes to be sustainable from an economic standpoint. But not so much that I have to hire a lot of people and I become unconnected with what we do here. So you know, before we met today, I was out working, and when we're done, I'll go back to work. Vines to me are like people. You know, I know them, and in certain areas they're, they're slightly sickly, in other areas they're too healthy, they're too vigorous, and I, I think it's very important to have that relationship uh, you know, with those vines.